So I'm going to be covering um, how to use YouTube, uh, YouTube videos, uh, create your own and use other videos for teaching. And so I've got lots of examples and things like that. My email address is here. And I'm also, this PowerPoint slide's got a lot of links in it. And so if you guys want that uh, after the fact uh, to have the links, that way you don't have to take notes or anything like that. So I'll give you this PowerPoint slide with all the information in it. So basically what I'm gonna cover is, uh, first of all, why use video, copyright concerns, issues and resources, YouTube basics, uh, content ID on YouTube, how that works, using YouTube links in classes, PDFs and OERs, uh, video capture and editing tools, and then helpful links and how to's. So first I'm gonna show you guys uh, kind of what got me started on this uh, several years ago and using videos so much. Um, I started, I'm, I am a digital forensics examiner. And so I do forensics on computers and cell phones and things like that. And I got pretty good at it and started making some how-to videos using some of the world's top software to do that. And when I started doing it, I didn't get permission from the uh, companies um, that manufactured the software. I just did it, made some how-to videos. I was actually contacted by the CEO of one of the world's largest uh, forensic companies. And he asked me actually if I would do some webinars for them because he liked my video so much. And so the reason why I tell you that story is because um, you, can, it, you can use other content that belongs to other people, but there are certain guidelines, rules, things like that. But ultimately it's up to the owner of the content, whether they want to allow you to use it. Most of the time they will allow you to use it. And especially if it's something that's helpful to them or makes them look good. And so um, now after, after the CEO reached out to me, I've done several different webinars for Cellbrite and now on their website, um, they pretty much refer to me uh, or refer their customers to me for how-to videos and things like that on advanced digital uh, extractions. And so here's a couple of webinars that I've done with some of their top engineers uh, over the years. And so I have made hundreds and hundreds of videos related to digital forensics. Um, and the reason why I started making videos, I'm gonna open up a diagram here. This is a diagram of how to do forensics on an IoT device. Uh, some of you might even have this device. It's the Echo Show 10 third generation from Amazon. Uh, but as you can see, it's quite complicated and how you would do forensics on it. Now, there are some teardown videos on electronic devices out there, but they really don't uh, focus on the forensic aspect of it because that's a, a different um, a different requirement. Not many people need to do forensics on devices. So it's complicated and I get lots, I started getting lots of questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? And so I started making videos. And so that diagram will show them how to do it. But a video, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then how much is 30 frames per second, right? So here is a video that I made tearing down the device. And I'm going to speed it up here a little bit. Um, but essentially, it goes through and walks through step by step. There's no audio to it at all. But I did some editing to it and showing them how to take this device apart, how to get down to the uh, logic board where the data is stored, and how to extract that data, which requires some micro soldering and things like that. But I go through the whole process step by step. The advantage of using video for any type of instruction is that you know students at any time they can pause this they can slow it down speed it up they can pause it um, like i can stop the video right there and so they can work at their own pace or at whatever time is convenient for them and of course the advantages of using youtube is that that works on just about every platform there is in the world youtube will work on every mobile device, phone, even on this very IoT device, which I'm taking apart right here in this video, uh, YouTube works just fine on that. Whereas if you try some other um, formats, they might have some issues looking at it. But let's face it, YouTube is something that can be viewed all Scott, over the world. Scott, excuse me, but we're not yes. seeing we're not seeing any video. We're only seeing a still. 
you're not okay um are you seeing any video now no okay are you so what still photo are you we're, or seeing, what are you we're seeing? seeing we're seeing the screen that says why video with the different screenshots on it interesting okay um all right let me try i'm going to try a different video here see if you guys can see this can you guys can you guys see that no video okay are you seeing my desktop we are seeing we are seeing your desktop with screen sharing which says why video and it has like a Ferris Bueller day off and Blades mm -hmm. of Glory, and then it has just a still of the echo. Okay. Um, but when I play a video, you guys are not seeing the video? That is not good. Okay. Let me try. And you guys see my web browser open here. No. Nothing. You may have to share whatever it is that you're popping up. Okay, let me. Uh... Go back. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Share. And should be sharing screen one. Can you guys see the screen now? Yes, we're seeing a different screen, which so is the fight, club, the fight fight club robbery. Okay, all right. So let me try this video one more time here. See if you guys can see this just to test it out. Can you guys see the video playing now? Yes. You can, okay. So this is the video of the, the teardown that I was talking about. And sorry for that. I don't know what happened there with that technical difficulty. Um, but again, the advantages of video and showing how to do this through video is that they can pause it, do things at their own pace. Uh, and of course, if you're not doing it live like this, when you have technical issues, they can come back and watch it anytime they want. So I started doing that um, with my classes and teaching um, some of the fundamentals of criminal law, which are kind of difficult for people to grasp. Okay, can you guys see this video here? You guys see that video okay? Okay, good. Okay, so basically what I, what I did here is, is I'm just opening up the penal code and just talking as I'm recording, and I'm using a screen capture software, and I'll let you guys know what that is later on. But the screen capture software allows me to draw a rectangle around whatever I'm doing on the screen to include a PDF document and allows me to go through and just talk to the class just like you would in lecture. But instead, it's a YouTube video, so they can go through and watch it at their own pace and things like that. So I took that and started uh, my students love anything that's entertaining, of course. I'm sure all students do. Uh, and so the first video I made was Fight Club Robbery. Okay, so first of all, you guys can see all this, right? Yes. I'm kind of pretty annoyed now. Okay, so what I've done here on the screen captures, I've drawn my my square when I made this video around a YouTube video that was not posted by me. It was posted by somebody else. And I've also included in here um, the penal code. And so I go through and I explain the concept that my students were having trouble understanding about aggravated robbery. And I go through and narrate this and also play the video at the same time so they can see so they can get a better idea of what the elements of robbery are because learning what the elements of an offense are very confusing to a lot of people that are not familiar with the law but being able to provide them an example of what this crime is using a video 
is very helpful to them. And plus they get to watch some of their favorite shows. So here's one I did the other day on deadly conduct. Okay, and I'm gonna open that up and make sure you guys can see this. Okay, can you guys see the Captain America Winter Soldier video there? Yes. Okay, good. So very short video. I usually have a couple of opening still slides to explain what the video is gonna be about. And so there's the penal code and there's a specific section with the elements of the offense that we're talking about. Okay, so I used the video there from Captain America Winter Soldier. Most of my students have seen that movie before to explain the elements, part of the elements of deadly conduct. There's several different parts of it there. Here's another one I did for uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Some of you will remember this from the 80s. So there's not much said in this video here, but I've got the elements for the offense of criminal trespass in Texas. And it explains what the elements are while they're able to see this guy actually committing the offense. Okay, so very short videos that I make on how to do vent. I'll show you how I incorporate that in the penal code later. Here's one for assault. A lot of my students like this one. Okay, one of my favorite movies there, Blades of Glory, if you like Will Ferrell. Um, but basically, I have a bunch of these videos like this where I can explain to them the elements of an offense and actually capture their attention where they're interested in it. And I'll show you some more examples of that here in a minute. So uh, first of all, uh, one of the main concerns of the questions I get is, hey, is this legal? Can you do this? Can you use these video clips? And so we're going to cover some of that there. So I've got a link here to CTC's resources you guys hopefully you guys can all see this so if you have my powerpoint slide you click on a link it's going to take you to ctc site and you can it's got some very useful links there on copyright resources and information about that um, particular link in there also is um, something uh, that has a checklist here favoring fair use versus dis disfavoring fair use so if you look at this document here, and this is from Cornell University, it goes through and it says, okay, here's things that favor using something for fair use that doesn't belong to you, and here's some things that disfavor it, okay? And so you can kind of educate yourself on that. The important thing to remember here on anything that you're doing is um, educate yourself, use common sense, always follow CTC policy, and I've got some general rules here that have to do with fair use and things to consider. So for instance, the purpose, ours is for educational and nonprofit. And so that is favoring fair use. The size, how much of the material you're using, if you're only using a fraction of it, that um, favors fair use. Whether it's fact or fiction, so it's easier to use news and things like that as regarded uh, in, instead of uh, creative content money if you're not trying to monetize the material of course um, no harm so be nice if you're making a video and you're talking about a product or somebody's movie or anything and you're trashing it you're probably more likely to run up against somebody who's not going to like what you're doing um, so i use it just as educational purposes and that's it 
don't use illegal content from illegal sites. So movies that I'm using, I'm getting right off of YouTube. They're already on YouTube, and I'm just using pieces of them. Don't um, follow the latest craze out there in which you can watch a movie that just got released last night on some illegal website and then take a snip of that and use it on your YouTube channel. You're more likely to get dinged for that because it's brand new and it's not supposed to be out there. So don't break the law. And of course, always follow CTC policy there. So um, there's some steps here to upload stuff to YouTube. And I also have a link uh, that I'll show you later on how to create a YouTube page and things like that to show you how that works. But I'm gonna show you how I use this stuff in the penal code here. Now, this is a PDF of the Texas Penal Code. It's a government document and it is not protected by copyright. We actually load this penal code into uh, the Blackboard class. You can also download it in Word form, in PDF form from uh, the state of Texas and they give it to you to use as you wish. <clears throat> so what I do is I go in and I put some, it has bookmarks and links already in the penal code, which is helpful for students to navigate around. But I put some YouTube links in there to help students better understand how to do things. So I create a little caption there and this tells them, hey, you can learn about assaultive offenses by watching Batman Begins, this little YouTube clip here that I made. And this talks about examples of assault, assault with injury, aggravated assault. And then I've got a little link here. They just click on the YouTube bubble, click on that and then the YouTube video is opening up. So first of all, can you guys see this video of Batman Begins? Can you guys see it okay? Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay, so this is a very detailed, a longer video that's like four minutes long, but I go through and I highlight and I put citations in there and show where it comes from in the penal code. And I also play segments of the movie while this is going on to illustrate the different types of offenses there so they get to see part of the movie as well. So I use an example like that to show an example of assault with injury and there's several different offenses that are committed against Bruce Wayne in this particular segment. So again, it's just a way that I go through and explain uh, a concept or concepts that students generally have trouble with. Now, I also, that's a four minute video. I also put in some short videos, like six seconds long, things like that. So if I'm explaining a particular part of assault, uh, again, they can click on my little bubble here and read what this is about. This is assault with injury under 2201A1. It's a class A misdemeanor. It's got the link there to the YouTube uh, video that I created, and then a very short video that shows what that is. So again, just a six second video there, but it demonstrates all the elements of the, of the offense here that I wanted to explain to them. Same thing with assault by contact, which is a much more minor offense. Again, they can click on the bubble, see what I'm talking about there, and just click on a very short video. So, so again, no injury caused to Bruce Wayne, but uh, touching someone without their consent and it causes, and, and they're offended by it, it's assault by contact, so I can explain that concept to them. And there's, you can put in as many links, so I'm constantly growing the links and things like that that I have in here on how to explain stuff like that. But it's just the way that I incorporate this. You can do the same thing in an OER, follow the rules of the OER regarding sharing and things like that. But you can put links in there in your OERs or in uh, material like this that is not protected by copyright. So going back to um, YouTube, so creating a YouTube uh, video is pretty simple or uploading a YouTube video is pretty simple. And so it's a process. Now I'm going to show you how to create a YouTube channel later or, or video on how to do it. But essentially what I'm doing with the video is when I take a snip of a video offline, like here's the video of the assault from Blades of Glory. As you can see, I put it in 
a video editor. I've also got some links for video editors that are free or some that you can pay for. I like Adobe Premiere Pro. It's what I've used to make all my videos. But I can come in here and I can edit. I can set up uh, different captions and things like that. And then once I do that, once I get the video that I want, then I go to my YouTube channel and I can go to the dashboard and upload the video here and literally just drag the video that I made in there. YouTube will automatically upload it and you have to fill in a couple of things along the way. You can put your title here. You can put some description of what the video is about if you like. You can put a thumbnail that you want to appear um, as when people look at the video, this is what they're going to see, the first whatever scene that you want. Um, then you can also look at whatever um, playlist that you want to put it under. So I've got several playlists on my YouTube channel. You can put it under multiple playlists or none at all if you like. Then uh, you've got the option to say, is this for kids or this is not for kids? I always select no, it's not for kids because if you select it's for kids, then it triggers a whole bunch of other stuff that you have to, that are required there. So I just always check that no, it's not for kids generally. Um, then it's gonna go to the video. You can add some different subtitles here. You can add an end screen, you can add cards, uh, but YouTube will transcribe this for you. will add subtitles for you automatically. And it's also performing a, a check right here, a copyright check. So notice on this video, that four minute video that I uploaded from Batman Begins, YouTube checks it and it meets all of their requirements and passes the copyright check right here for you. So I get a pass on that. And then finally, you can select whether you want it private, unlisted or public. Uh, I usually select unlisted, but you can select private if you want, or you can select public. The difference is if you put it in public, anybody can find it theoretically online just by searching. Unlisted, you're gonna have to provide a link and so I put a link, I just give a link to my class or whatever, and, um, but I do have some public videos on there as well. So you just check what you want there, and then you click upload, and if it's a real short video, it's gonna be done in a matter of seconds, and it shows you the videos uploaded. You've got a link here you can share with anybody that you want, and YouTube has you know checked it, and it's passed the copyright test. So there's a little bit more detail I'll go in about that here in a minute. So. Is everybody still hearing and seeing me okay and seeing my screen? Okay. Yes? Just wanna make sure I haven't lost anybody. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so I've got some links here to uh, fair use. Now there's, there's a couple of links uh, put out by YouTube. It talks about fair use, uh, copyright on YouTube, their policy about taking down uh, your content or to, based on content ID. I'll talk about that in a minute. One important note here is YouTube does not determine fair use. They have an algorithm and a database of videos that belong to other people out there. I'm talking about a massive database. Um, and so they run this algorithm, the algorithm checks, but ultimately the owner of the content at any time can flag what you're doing and say, look, I don't like the way you're using it, or I wanna, be, I wanna make money off of it or whatever. But ultimately, YouTube doesn't make that determination. Only a court of law can, really, if, if it comes down to it. But by them running it through their algorithm, the chances of you running into any problems if it passes their algorithm is almost nil, okay? And especially if you're not trying to monetize it or anything like that. Uh, so there's some good videos here uh, from private individuals that are putting out how they use uh, video clips in there. These clips are out there. Um, people don't really care if you use them so long as it helps them or is favorable to them. Or if you're going to make money off of it, they're going to want a share of it. But generally, I've never run into an issue uh, using videos like this. So I created a video from um, to explain the other part of deadly conduct, and I have two videos here. One has been flagged by YouTube and as with a copyright claim, and the other one is after it was flagged for the copyright claim is that I corrected, and there it no longer has a claim. So I'm gonna show you both of those and explain how those work. So I'm gonna show you my channel here. All right, so as you can see, I've got these two videos here. Now notice right here, it's got this copyright claim 
on this one minute and five second video that I created from the movie, The Other Guys, right? Now, the good thing about YouTube is, is that when you have a copyright claim like this, you can hover over it, you can click on see details and it'll open up and it tells you what exactly they're talking about. It even gives you the segment of the video. So here it's saying from 11 seconds to a minute and four, in other words, from 11 seconds all the way to the end of the video is the copyright claim according to their algorithm. Now, it does not prevent me from sharing this video. It does not prevent me from using it or anything else. It just says that I can't monetize it, okay, because of that claim. So I could leave it as is if I wanted to. I could also come over here and collect, uh, click on that down arrow there and trim the segment out, or I can make a dispute and I can challenge it, okay? But so I could leave it like it is, but I don't like to do that. I like for all of my videos to have none under the restrictions, okay? So I re-edited this video so that I got rid of the copyright claim. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play you the first uh, submission that I made that had the copyright claim. Now, this is from the movie, The Other Guys, talking about deadly conduct. Okay, so again, I put my two little opening screens in there. Okay, I love that movie. All right, so that was my first iteration there, and that got me the copyright claim. So what I did, I said, okay, I looked at their, the copyright claim, and I looked at what they had, the problem they had with it, and so I recut the video again, and this time it went to 42 seconds, and then it passed the copyright claim. So, so we'll watch the second video, and you see nothing's really changed that much. It's still funny. It still has all the content in there, but now it passes their copyright check. So let's play that. So again, the first two uh, screens there, I left them the same way and left all my captions the same. I just cut out some of the video. Okay, so shorter video, and let me bring that up and I'll show you exactly what I did in my editing here. Okay, so here's a screenshot of everything kind of together. So the first video I posted was 54 seconds long, and you can see here's the segment of video that I got from YouTube and snipped out of YouTube. I added my um, captions and things like that in there, but then I got the copyright claim when I posted it, right? Now it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, keep me from using it. I can share it. I just can't make money off of it. But I, I like for all the videos to be clean. And so I come back in and I say, okay, I'm going to re-edit it. So here's what I did. So I took this 54 uh, second segment here, went to the video editor, and I cut it up in two different places there and just cut out sections of the video. So it's still same. it's still the same video. It just has some sections cut out. And then once I did there, of course, I get no restrictions there at all. And so then I can use it and it, there's no restrictions on it at all. Even though I'm not going to try to make money off of it, I still like to make sure that there's no restrictions there when I post the video. Um, so using video editing software, you can uh, take something that if, even if you get a claim here, and again, this doesn't impact your channel at all, a copyright claim like this. Uh, they're just telling you you can't monetize the video. Okay. Um, there's a helpful 
a video here from YouTube about content ID, okay? Now there's a link here that tells you about content ID. You can read about it. And then there's a video there you can watch. I've got that link here directly to the video. It's about three minutes long. I wanna watch it and let you guys see because this is how YouTube tracks these videos and how they work online. Okay, so it kind of gives you an idea about uh, content ID and how that works. So essentially anything that you post on there, oh, sorry about that. Close that out. Um, but that gives you an idea of how the content ID works. And when you post a video, when you take a snip of a video, it's gonna get scanned by that database. And that's how these determinations are made, whether there's a copyright claim or not. But most of the time you can fix it yourself with just using a shorter, snip of it or some change like that uh, and it's no problem so on the, at the end of the slides here there's some helpful links on how to create a youtube channel there's a three minute video on that i'm not going to play that but here's some video software tools that i use to capture the video uh, to edit the video that kind of stuff and how you can find the free editing stuff online it's pretty simple basically there's hundreds of different programs out there that you can use for free and so some of you are probably already doing some of this already. And so just use whatever works for you or whatever you're familiar with. I use one that I, that I pay for, I think it was $30, uh, one-time fee, uh, but it's just one that I've used for a long time, but you can get all this stuff for free. So I think that's it. So if there's, hope I didn't go over time or anything like that. Thank you, Scott. Well, I think we're running a little long, but that's okay. We have a way to make that up.
Um, we appreciate all the detail that you went into on this. Um, it, it, can people get a copy of your um, presentation? Yes. Can they get? Yeah, so if you email me, here's my uh, email address there, um, and I'll send you a copy of the um, of the presentation with all the links and things like that in it. That, that's awesome because there was so much there. I don't know if it was like that for anybody else, but I mean, I need to go back and look at it again and explore some of those links. So we really appreciate you taking the time to put that together for us.